Okay, let's get part five done. So, uh, chapter 56. Safety services. What is a safety service? Um, it's listed, really. We've got scope here, 560. This chapter covers general requirements for safety services, selection and erection of electrical supply systems for safety services, and electrical safety sources. Standard electrical supply systems are outside of the scope. And then it gives us a little list. So we are talking here about emergency lighting systems, fire pump systems, fire rescue lifts, fire detection, zero detection, fire evacuation, smoke ventilation, fire services, essential medical systems and industrial safety systems. Safety services normally aren't part of your principal design, normally aren't you know a fundamental part of the client's request um because quite often you know they they want what they want for them to do their work but you know there are requirements there are there are many other standards which have to be followed and being able to design a suitable safety service is very important we have a couple of things to talk about um we'll start with classification 560.4 i touched on this briefly in the previous video so this says 560.4.1, an electrical safety service will either be a non-automatic supply, which is initiated by an operator, or an automatic supply, where it's independent of an operator, so it'll either be manually operated or not. An automatic supply then, the question is, this, you know, how automatic? So there is a change over time to consider. We have no break, which is what it sounds like. So an automatic supply which produces a continuous supply within specified conditions during the period of transition, for example, as regards variation of voltage and frequency. This um, You'll see this in, um, in some data centers where you'll have a stored battery supply, maybe in some medical locations where you'll have a stored battery supply. It will be a already stored supply, like a UPS system. It won't be a diesel driven generator because obviously that kind of thing can't kick in and power up and take over you know in a instantaneous period it'll take a bit of time so if you want something that's ready there you'll have something that's idle that's standing by battery most likely that will then immediately take over we then have very short break which is within 0.15 seconds short break within half a second normal break within five seconds medium and long okay now with regards to what you decide to use, that will be determined by the requirements of what you're doing. If, for example, we jump ahead to 710 and we look in medical locations, you will see there's a section on classification. Page 280, 710.560.4. We're in 560.4, so 710.560.4. Classification, and it gives you an example. So, requirements for groups one and two locations, and then it will say further down there power supply sources where the changeover period must be less than or equal to half a second. And it gives you examples luminaires of operating theatres, medical equipment containing a light source that is essential for its application, life supporting medical equipment. You then have less than or equal to 15 seconds, and it tells you there. Equipment within 15 seconds, it must be able to maintain that for a period of up to 24 hours, etc. etc. And then you have greater than 15 seconds, so you have sterilization equipment, technical building installation, schooling equipment, etc. etc. So, those, those are examples of classifications, and quite often they will be dictated by the, the, uh, the type of environment you're installing to. They won't really be there for you to determine. We then have general back in 560.5. Safety services may be required to operate at all relevant times, including during mains and local supply failure and through fire conditions. Obviously, things like fire alarms and emergency lighting, they must be designed to operate in a fire condition so that if there is a fire event, you know, people can escape and firefighters can do search and rescue. Electrical sources for safety services, 560.6. This can be a storage battery, a primary cell, a generator set, or a separate feeder. 
different sources of safety services. We have in parallel operating out of parallel uh, central power supply sources 560.6.10. This is uh, regarding battery power. So batteries shall be of vented or valve regulated maintenance free type and shall be of heavy duty industrial design. And it says in the note the minimum design life of these at 20 degrees should be 10 years. And then for low power supply source where they have a 500 watt 3 hour duration or a 1500 watt 1 hour duration these will have a life of 5 years at 20 degrees. More, more common the type that you'd find in emergency lighting. Okay. Um, monitoring system. Circuits of safety services. 560.7. Except with the recommendations of other safety standards apply. Circuits of safety services shall be independent of other circuits. Now. That's very important to understand because if you think about it. When you're designed to do an installation. You, you put in a wiring system. A tray or trunking. If you throw in a safety service. Into that into that system then any other work that you do on that system or the route that you take that system may not be in the best interest of a safety service so a safety service should really be separately assessed and separately installed in a way that is most advantageous for its uh, life to not diminish and for it to work in the required scenario so when you go to a large industrial kind of site, you'll probably notice when you look from the main switch room that you'll see a tray leading off with all the power and distribution on it and next to it, another tray with a lot of the fire alarms and the emergency lighting on it. So they're separately in installed. In very small installations like some shops or pubs, then you may just have a separate wiring system for your fire alarm, but your emergency lighting might be self-contained within the luminaires, so it's not really a, a concern for that. But if we do have it, it must be separately installed and it should be separately assessed and it should really be separately designed. It should be it should be considered that um, the, the route of installation shouldn't uh, consider the rest of the installation. It should be dedicated just to safety services. It then says safety circuits or safety services shall not pass through locations exposed to fire risk unless they're fire resistant. And in no case will they pass through an area of explosion risk. Mentions of overcurrent protection being potentially omitted for safety services. Um, they're not going to fire supplies or lifts like that. Five six zero dot seven dot ten is uh, sorry dot nine and dot ten is interesting. So. In addition to a general schematic diagram, full details of all electrical safety sources shall be given. The information shall be maintained adjacent to the distribution board and a single line diagram is sufficient. A drawing or drawings of the electrical safety installations shall be available showing the exact location of all equipment and distribution boards with equipment designations, safety equipment with final circuit designation and particulars and purpose of the equipment, and special switching and monitoring equipment for the safety power supply, such as area switches, visual or acoustic warning equipment. This should all be a separate uh, drawing and standard drawing, which would also be put into the OEM on a delivery of a new of a new installation. Wiring systems. One or more of the following shall be used. So we have MI fire resistance cables. The wiring system shall be selected to meet the requirements of the relevant code of practice appropriate to the application and should be mounted and installed in such a way the circuit integrity will not be impairing, impaired during a fire. We've kind of touched on that already now. Wiring for control and bus systems of safety services shall be in accordance with the same requirements as the wiring which is to be used for the safety services. This does not apply to circuits that do not adversely affect the operation of any safety equipment. Okay, and they can be supplied by direct current, provided they are two-pole overcurrent protective mechanisms. And switch gear control gear for both AC and DC supply sources shall be suitable for both AC and DC operation. It then has at the end, in big bold, 560.9 emergency lighting, 
560.10 fire detection and 560.11 life safety these are sending you to other standards which have finer requirements for the design so with emergency lighting you go to bs5266 which will talk to think talk about things like uh, times testing lux levels uh, passing width um, high risk task areas le levels of lux within certain areas certain barriers and when you open up 5266 there's lots of information relative to the emergency lighting design but whenever there's a reference to the selection and direction of a wiring system it will at that point say cbs7671 so bs7671 is the, the the main backbone which you then put extra content onto with the details of the finer systems so if you're doing emergency lighting you have to follow bs5266 it also mentions bscm1838 there as well and bs5266 is a series there's a number of them to look at okay um i can produce content on that later on that's not part of this all right that's uh 56 done now Next is part six, inspection and testing. So we're leaving part five now. Part five was quite quite a mouthful. So we're going to go to part six next, which actually will just be chapter 64 because they've migrated all to chapter 64 in the 18th edition. They've got rid of chapters 61, 62, and 63. Um, I'll, I'll see you in a video in a few minutes. All right, cheers.